Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Super Smash Bros. Ultimate World of Light. In the last episode, we kind of climbed this mountain here a little bit, and we unlocked a few new characters like Zero Suit Samus and Shulk, I believe. And we got to the volcano area, we ran into James McCloud, but we said, no, we're not going to do him just yet. He, he's kind of a toughie, so we wanted to wait on him just a little bit. Yeah. So, we got here to the, kind of like the area, Prince Peasley from Super Mario RPG, or, sorry, uh, Super Mar Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, that's the one I'm thinking of. Well, I mean, hey, Gino is there, so you could have said <laughs> Super Mario RPG. I could have, but <laughs> I meant, yeah, I meant the other Mario RPG. Um, yeah, he's kind of blocking our path here to the next area that's clouded off. And I do believe this is the last area we hadn't unlocked yet in the World of, World of Light area, uh, map. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff, and we're kind of just, uh, at this point, just putting uh, enhanceable spirits that we can enhance in here. So that way they can at least evolve after some time afterwards. We had a bunch that we just got back from the gym. Trying to figure out which one. <laughs> this was fun collecting the spirits I think in Mortal Light. I know that's the whole gimmick of the mode, but it is fun to do. Yeah, it is fun to do and I like it a lot. Um, yeah, we had a bunch of uh, exploration ones too. I didn't really get to do this one as much. I don't really care for this mode as much. Uh, upon like second look of everything I'm just like, eh. Yeah, you get, you get some items, but after what, like 20 minutes and you just get like scraps of items yeah it's not really worth it in my honest opinion and honest to gosh like i get why the dojos are there but i really don't see the use for them either they, they like, change your style of, of of the spirit if you if you like want to focus more on attack and whatnot but i don't know i don't really strategic uh, strategize in world of light as much as the next guy, I did beat this on hard mode lately, or just recently. So, <laughs> yeah, it took me a while, but, you know, I I, I just didn't even bother with the gym. <laughs> Anyways, we're fighting Prince Peasley. He's from Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. He's the prince of the Bean Bean Kingdom. Uh, another series of games I have yet to play in my life. Yeah, <laughs> so I wouldn't know. This is Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, at least the first one, is one of my favorite games ever. I love the game so much. It's so funny. It's so... It, it got me into Mario RPGs in general. I know Paper Mario is really funny, but Mario and Luigi is really, really funny. It's a kind of a... I mean, it's... It, rip Alpha Dream, because there's people that made it. But it's really kind of an underrated series. I do think that it gets overshadowed by Paper Mario quite a bit, in my honest opinion. I know Nintendo kind of thinks differently because Mario and Luigi is now kind of the main RPG series of Mario in general. They don't really consider Paper Mario an RPG series anymore, which... Well, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole in this <laughs> video, but we know what happened to Paper Mario. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, like I said, let's say the fans are not happy about that. And to be honest, I can understand their gripes. I can understand being upset. Yeah. But, you know, it's just like... The, don't have to take it out on Mario and Luigi. Mario and Luigi's a good series, in my honest opinion. Anyways, we got Prince Peasley. Uh, we had, we Pichu, were Pichu's like, I won? <laughs> Pichu's like, I actually won a game? <laughs> Poor Pichu. <laughs> I didn't damage myself? But yeah, it, it unlocked this thing. The clouds. And there's a plant right here, so we have to use Veridi to grow the beanstalk. Oh, so she's dragging the beanstalk, okay. Pretty much. I mean, she is the goddess of nature, after all. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, there's a sky up here, and then le it actually leads up to Galeem, and um, I know the other way you can go is through, through space on the other end of the map, but yeah, this is the sky. There's a lot of stuff, and there's like a mini dungeon there, too. So, we're going to be climbing, well, actually, no, we're going to be backtracking, because I, I think we figured out in the recording, we're like, oh... Uh, we need to finish James McLeod. We kind of just skipped him. Yeah, like we said earlier, at the time we thought he looked really tough because his levels and everything were like, uh, maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> oh, 
so it's hard to remember like because this has been a while since we recorded this episode in particular it's hard to remember everything that we did in the episode but it's also thinking about it's like why were we so scared compared to what was coming up we were still learning the game one thing i will say that i'm watching back on these videos and i'm like Mmm, getting, <laughs> getting kind of getting mad about is there's an autofill option button. If you just push Y on spirits, it automatically fits you with a with a good team to kind of take on the spirit. And that we just never used it. We never used that button. That we never. I don't used think we ever noticed it. We didn't just look at it or something. I don't know. I, I guess not. We just never bothered using it. We went and selected each spirit one by one. And I know that took a lot of time. Yeah. A lot of our time came out from just doing that. And James McCloud's actually really hard. This is a really hard map because I think he increases his attack and speed after a while. Yeah, his attack power, defense, and move speed go up. A lot, and well, it's Fox. Fox is really fast. I, I was about ready to say, I was like, it makes a lot of sense for using Fox to to portray his dad. After all, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't make any other sense to use somebody I mean, else. Really, when you really think about it, James McCloud is just Fox with sunglasses. Yeah, they actually could just added sunglasses to him, and they really would have been James McCloud. I mean, I get it. Uh, by the way, like, this took a couple of attempts. I cut out to the best attempt, by the way. Most of these things in these in these next videos, for the next couple of videos that we do post-commentary, I cut out most of our bad attempts. So, yeah, we're gonna, like, you'll be seeing pretty much the, the good run of each one. And I think I mentioned that in the last episode, but I just wanted to reiterate that James McCloud took a couple tries. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, he's hard. Yeah, I mean, he is hard, so... Alright, so I think we have... I think, yeah, the gym, gym kind of went up a little bit during that time period. I mean, it didn't go up very much, but we I think we were trying to get Geno maxed. Yeah. Yeah, we got Geno maxed just now, so... We're like, yay, we can actually have maxed him. So that way we're going to put James McLeod in there to train. You know, the guy that was already hard, we're just going to make mm -hmm. him harder for everybody. Yeah. So now I think we cleared out the uh, the volcano area of the game. So now we can head over to the next area, which is the clouds. Which, uh, to be honest, it's it's not very it's not a very big area of the game, and but we did see kind of remnants of it uh, with the pink magicant area because actually yeah the pink magicant area from Earthbound is in there too. So. We're gonna have Bowser just, you know, charge on down the, with his big self down this pathway, is what I think. I'm just I mean, he's used to it. Let's let's be honest here. <laughs> I'm having a hard time traversing down this mountain. We're gonna go up this beanstalk, and I was like, oh wait, look at the Bowser climbing a beanstalk. <laughs> it looks weird when you think about yeah. it. Yeah. And then the first thing we're fighting is a centurion from. Kid Icarus. I think this is a. I think this is a uh, regular Mook enemy from Uprising, if I remember correctly. No. One of us needs to play no. Uprising at some point. <laughs> I'm sorry, Centurion's one of the things in Palutena's army. I'm sorry, I was completely wrong about that. It's like one of the one of the regular soldiers from uh, Palutena's army. It's kind of those guys. Remember in Brawl. Remember Pitt's final smash and brawl was Palutena in the background, and then she sent the soldiers to attack you? Yeah. Yeah, that's what the Centurions are. Okay. I'm sorry, I forgot to say that. I mean, br freaking Pitt. Freaking Pitt changed his final smash three times during the course of his his uh, uh, tenure here in Smash Brothers. He's changed, it. he had his regular one, which was. Paul Tatum in the background because Paul Tatum in Brawl, Paul Tatum wasn't a character. So, yeah. Um, well, now in, she is. Yeah, in, <laughs> in uh, Smash for Wii U, Pit's final Smash was the Three Sacred Treasures, which is from Uprising, which I thought was kind of a decent, good final Smash form. But I guess since they got everything's got, uh, has to, all the final Smashes basically 
uh, had to get straight to the point in Ultimate. They changed it again in Ultimate when Pit's Final Smash is now the Lightning Chariot, which, if I remember correctly, it only shows up one time in Uprising. Just one time! And it was like a transition from a stage to another stage. It wasn't even that that big of a deal, but they, they made it a big deal. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm not too well versed because I haven't played Uprising yet, but I've seen a couple playthroughs if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, I need to actually play it because I do have it. Oh, I guess that one of us needs to play it at some point in yeah, our life. I mean, I'm a big Nintendo fan, but I ha I'm going to admit I have not played every Nintendo game. Every Nintendo franchise. I'm sorry. I meant to say that, like. I haven't played Pikmin, I haven't played Kid Icarus, I haven't played... What other ones haven't I played? There's a lot to remember. Yeah. Well, we're actually fighting the Odyssey now. The ship from Mario Odyssey. <laughs> the giant hat, which... I don't know, I don't. I thought spirits had to be living things, but I guess spirits don't have to be living things. I mean, we have seen spirits that are just regular food items. So, makes sense. I think I'm going to play a Zero Suit Samus on this one. And of course, we chose, you know. Our big boy. We <laughs> keep cho choosing M. Bison as a main spirit because that was like our. That was the spirit we used the most in this map. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it helped. Yeah, for it sure. did. Oh, I forgot. I was going to enhance the spirit because I didn't do it. Primal Groudon. Or what was that video we watched yesterday that called him something else and mispronounced it? Oh. Name? Grudion or something like that. We're watching the Ho the Hoenn Poke rap from the anime, and they call Groudon Grudin. Grudin. <laughs> like, that's not that's like not food. Kai Kairoge. Yeah, or something like that. I was or like, like, <laughs> like that's literally not how you pronunciate pronunciate those names. I, I I know I'm pretty bad at pronunciating names, but come on, man, that's like with IGN's review of of uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. They called Rain Rhine. Or we call no I'm sorry, they called Rhine Rain. <laughs> Got those mixed up there. He's right as rain, right? Right as right as rain. Uh, the X parasites that if you get them to max level they turn into nightmare from Metroid Fusion. So, I think you would know about that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I always I thought that they you know, I'm gonna be honest, whenever I saw that the X parasites were enhanceable I thought they were going to turn into SAX. Not Nightmare. SAX. Because SAX was the bigger threat of that game. Nightmare was just a memorable boss from Fusion would that everybody liked. Would you have liked it if they did? Yeah, I would have liked it. We're going to fight the, uh, fight the Odyssey now. It's a giant Jigglypuff. How does a ship fight? With lasers. <laughs> and bombs. And bombs. Can or cannons, I guess you could say. <laughs> Oh, they ha I forgot about this. They have the I forgot they have a um the dinosaur kingdom from Odyssey music in there. There we go. That Jimmy was Pub's easy. like I didn't even learn how to read. <laughs> Take a hand from Pin. <laughs> but yeah, I think the next one I do believe uh, there's a bunch of like you know. Sky based things here in the sky, if you couldn't tell. Uh, we can go down and activate that area, and that goes to the magic hand area. Or we can get grab this chest. What's in this chest? Snack him. Medium sized snack. Hey, it is snack time, okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're gonna have you use Ho Oh here to make a rainbow. I mean, that's what he's good at. I mean, Ho Oh is the rainbow Pokemon. And we're going to see a bunch of Kid Icarus characters and Wart from Super Mario 2. And Flying Man from Earthbound. Because why not? Yeah. <laughs> the Flying Man, the, you know, the stage hazard of Magicant stage. We're now in the Magicant area, and you can probably guess who that fighter is in the Magicant area. I, I mean... Snake? No. <laughs> I'm just joking. I mean, sure, if he was asleep. <laughs> We're gonna be fighting. It's Kirby, isn't it? It's Kirby. <laughs> um, we're gonna be fighting the Flying Man team, which is a uh, Ness and a Me Brawler that's dressed up like Fighting Man. I do believe it's a stamina. Yeah, it's a stamina fight. So you have to be mindful of your health. Can I just say, like, I like stamina fights, but they are annoying. 
Yeah, because you're just so used to knocking everybody off the stage and everything else. Yeah. This one, if I remember correctly, this one took us a little bit. I didn't like this one because this one was actually really de difficult. Difficult because one thing about this one, yeah, the flying men go down a lot, but there's like three of them that you have to fight. And not only that, Ness, I mean, I made it look easy, but this is like, I think, our third attempt trying to do it, and I just got so sick and tired of Ness and his nonsense, but Ness kept running away, kept spamming PK fire, and everybody knows how annoying Ness is with PK fire. Yep. I like Sam with his final flash, too. I do, too. Actually, there wasn't three flying men. There was, like, five of them. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, there was, like, a whole bunch of flying men. Yeah, Ness is annoying, because especially when you get... You know, not, not to try to call anyone out here, but when you get online and you're doing the online play of Smash, and somebody's playing as Ness, they always spam. PK, PK fire. fire. Mm -hmm. That's all you hear. PK fire, PK fire, PK fire, like, PK fire. He has other moves, you know. Well, I'm just saying. No, but that one traps you, and I can just combo you. Gosh, I hate PK fire. That way, please, please nerf. But here we go. Here's our fighter. If you guess Ness, you guessed right. So we were talking about Ness, and look, he's got demon eyes. I don't like his eyes in that picture. They got little red dots in there when there should be just flat out black. And well, I mean, we, we know the story so far what's happened, right? Mm. <laughs> they all got red eyes. Yeah. We're going to be fighting this, and once we be, uh, beat this, we'll be able to unlock him. Now, granted, in the game already, if I remember correctly, in our first episode when we did our first battle, we unlocked Ness automatically. He was the first one to unlock. I so. think I was playing as Samus here, because you're better at Samus than I am. I'm not used to her moves. So I was just kind of messing around here, trying to figure it yeah. out. PK Thunder! See, like, you can definitely tell whose play styles is who on this playthrough. <laughs> yeah. I like to spam... Unfortunately, I like to spam smash attacks. That's my <laughs> problem. PK Fire! PK Fire! Oh gosh, he used the... the oh, back, yeah. <laughs> forgot his back and reflect and it projectiles back at you. See, I'm not good with Samus. <laughs> That's okay. The suit Samus actually is kind of top tier, if I remember correctly. So she's really, like, really fast. I do like the adjustments that they did in just Smash 4 with Zero suit Samus. Because as much as, as Zero suit Samus was pretty cool in Brawl, she was kind of weak and it was kind of weird... You know, stipulation to get her unlocked yeah. because you had to use the final smash in order to get her. But they did up like buff her a lot in Smash Four by giving her the boots and her up be being a like a collage of kicks. So I thought that was pretty cool. But we unlocked this, and now we got to take on Wart. Wart is the final boss of Super Mario Bros. Two USA. Not Super Mario Bros. 2, the Lost Levels, Super Mario Bros. 2, the Lost, the, the, the USA version. Or, the base game that we got. Yeah, the Doki Doki Panic clone. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I like Mario 2, but it is such an odd game when you think it about it. It is weird, because it's different than the other ones. Um, <laughs> Wart is kind of a weird enemy, because I don't think he showed up in, no, he showed up one more time. He didn't show up again in Mario, but he showed up in Zelda and Link's Awakening. Yeah, there was a side quest in Link's Awakening that Wart was in there. And he then again, Link's song. Awakening is kind of weird, too, when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, Link's so. Awakening had a lot of weird Mario enemies in it. Like, it had Chain Chomp, it had Goombas. It definitely is a, a very different Zelda. <laughs> I really don't know why Peach is here. Like, I get King K. Rool is supposed to be, you know... Um, Wart and the slumber floor is supposed to rep represent the twist in Mario 2 that it was all a dream in Mario's head when he was asleep. I don't know why Peach is here. Did she get kidnapped? No. Oh you no, because you can play. You can play as Peach in Mario 2. I don't know why Peach is here. Maybe just to show you can play someone else in Mario. I don't. Know. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up. But, you know, it's just, like, I don't know why Peach is there. Like, it, it makes sense why K. K. Rule is bored. It makes sense that the slumber floor is on, in there. 
But I just don't know why Peach is there. So we got wart. We got warts. I don't want warts. They're bad for you. I'm going to have to freeze them off. <laughs> I don't think I've ever gotten a wart. I just hope you never do. Yeah. They're not fun. This, I do believe, it just pops you back out at the uh, Pac-Man maze. So if you need to go back. Yeah. And then we're going to be fighting uh, Dinto uh, Dintos, which I think is a Forge Master from the Kid, Kid Icarus games. Again, like I said, I haven't played Kid Icarus. Did you ever play the original? No, I, I played it for like five minutes. It's a, kind of the same situation with... Uh, uh, which one is it? Uh, Ice Climbers. I played it for five minutes and stopped playing it. <laughs> I mean, they're fun just to pick up and put down kind of games. I think we lost this one because he saw the transition there. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I was... Yeah, I think we lost a couple times in this one because DDD's kind of being a jerk. <laughs> that caused massive explosions. Yeah, this one's kind of weird because he's got a bunch of, like, scythe and stuff like that and bombs are exploding everywhere. I mean, he is a forge master, so... And it was a master spirit, so that unlocked another dojo that we can use to upgrade our spirits. Palatamus Temple. A.K.A. the worst stage next to uh, Great Cave Offensive. <laughs> I hate Paul Tamas Temple. Oh my gosh. I, I never really had much trouble on it whenever we do play on it. Yeah, it's just it's too big. I don't like maps that are really freaking huge. and I'm having a hard time just finding my characters in Smash, especially if there's more than like three people nowadays. And I'm just... It's just ridiculous. But we cleared out the Magic Can area. Now we can go back up and continue our conquest in the skies here. So, the next thing we gotta do is fight the pa Pegasus sisters. Paula, Est, and Katria. These are the, th the three Pegasus sisters that uh, uh, appeared in the Fire Emblem New Mystery of the Emblem, I believe. No, I think they showed up in the first Fire Emblem too. Yeah. I wouldn't know. I haven't played any of Fire Emblem besides Stray Houses. I can't so. remember. I haven't played the first. I haven't played the first one. I I never got Shadow Dragon. I never got. Um, I got the 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 localization uh, ROM of the first game, but I never played it. I haven't played it yet at this point. Um, but yeah, these characters are from the um, Arcanea. Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem game. And these characters, if I remember correctly, implemented the triangle attack feature in the Fire Emblem games. Uh, the triangle attack, if, if you play Fire Emblem, if you put, put, put three Pegasus units in a triangle formation around an enemy, um, like one next to a, uh, two next to him on the side and one on top on the map, They'll activate a, something called the Triangle Attack, which is an automatic critical hit. At least the, the, you need to have three Pegasus Knights, which, you know, these, these are sisters and there are three of them, so. They're all Lucinas, too, which makes sense. <laughs> because, I mean, fire them. <laughs> I just like how the spirits just called Pegasus Sisters. They couldn't have just called them Paula, S, and Katria. Or, <laughs> or like the one joke you guys made at the end of, uh... The Outland. Is it Outland playthrough? Of Leslie's on League? Or Jerry? Oh, that's just no. Yeah. That yeah. One. Oh my gosh. Outland is kind of an underrated game in my honest opinion. I love that game so much. Oh, I, That just made me think of that. I don't know why. <laughs> Amber. Amber. My boy. We're fighting your favorite champion in Breath of the Wild. We're fighting Rivoli. Uh, I think I handed you the controller at this point, if I remember I think correctly. So too. I was like, "Yeah, you can play this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta fight. You gotta fight your boy. Uh, this is Amber's favorite champion in in Breath of the Wild. Kind of a kind of. I, I just mean, like the bad boys, okay? <laughs> just like the jerks, <laughs> big old jerks, and birds. <laughs> I like birds, so. Yeah, he's represented as Falco, which kind of makes sense. That reminds me, that image right there where they're showing Falco. Um, there was a comic strip I saw the other day of Link just staring at Falco from Smash, and he's just like, why are you staring at me? 
and what's your problem kind of attitude and he's like oh nothing you just remind me of somebody and it shows like a vision of Ravali <laughs> you just just remind me of somebody <laughs> I really thought that does. was funny I think you were playing as Link because you had to it was kind of just like yeah I have to play as Link oh yeah <laughs> I mean you gotta make it work right yeah Got Rivoli, shooting attack. I mean, makes sense. He's got a bow. That's kind of his thing. I think my favorite, my favorite one's Mifa. I still like Mifa the best out of the four champions. You I'll like Delphin too. So. Yeah, I like I like Valruda when we played it. Oh, a superstar. Hey, Jump Stare. up, superstar. <laughs> Uh, this is a kind of a bad one because it just gives you invincibility after a while and uh, it gives Rosalina and Luma invincibility after a while and it's just... Oh, I hated this one if I remember correctly. I died a couple times to this one. We die a lot to these. Yeah. Just gonna be honest here. <laughs> Not good at Smash Brothers. But... Hey, we're having fun. That's all I'm <laughs> Yeah. Um, this one kind of stinks because... Uh, yeah, like I said, Rosalina gets invincible uh, several times during this, and it gets really, really freaking annoying when it happens. Now, granted, the stars appear, and you can grab it, and you can become invincible, but when you guys are both invincible, you can't do anything to each other. So it kind of kind of stinks when you really think about it. I think I've changed to Shulk. Yeah, we picked Bowser and I just... <laughs> immediately went to Shulk. <laughs> immediately went to Shulk because we could tell, tell this one was a... a <laughs> Bowser <cut>. was Shulk all <laughs> <laughs> It was a trick. I deceived you. Yeah, this is kind of the one I was... Uh, yeah. You freaking get both invincibility and you're just like, Well, uh, I'm, which one's going to lose their invincibility first? So I'm going to have to... Yeah, see, it's just like, okay, well, um, let's just dance around each other for a little bit. All the suit, all the, the, the invincibility stars are just get going everywhere. <laughs> Free stars! Who wants stars? Yeah. And the funny thing is, is the enemy just random and temporarily gets invincibility randomly, too. So it's just like, invincibility for everybody. Everybody's invincible. <laughs> It's like, you know, it's like, hey, Vegeta, did you really want to go and wish for immortality with the Dragon Balls? You just get a superstar. Just get a superstar. Get a superstar. <laughs> there you go, you're invincible. The true power of the Saiyans? Is that what they're called? Yeah. yeah. You can tell I don't keep up with Dragon Ball much. <laughs> they cleared that one. Like I said before, that took a little bit to get that one done. We're going to fight a Chow now. Um, or we're but just can you do here. the Chow Garden? That's the real question. No, not just yet. Oh, we we can go up to Gleam right now. But as you can see, I just died. It just spawned Master Hand. You have He's to like, fight no, me. no, no, like, no, 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 no. You gotta fight me first before you fight Gleam. So I was like, all right, well, you're just gonna have to hold on there. We're just gonna go finish the sky here to see what's going on. In this we're gonna fight a Chow. Ch the Chow are little creatures that you like, kind of like Tamagotchis back in the day. When with the uh, Sonic series, you can um, in some Sonic games, uh, namely Adventure and Adventure 2, had something called the Chow Garden, which is a little garden area. It was like a thing there, and you just create a a simulate a life simulation game, raising a Chow. These these creatures, you can just raise them up and have them compete in certain events. It was a weird little side mode in the Sonic Adventure games, but I loved it. Because it was a fun distraction. And it just makes me sad because Sega doesn't do that anymore. I wish yeah. I wish they would bring back the Chow Garden. I love the Chow Garden. I hate getting the emblems from the Chow Garden, but I love to play in the Chow Garden. I used to spend so many hours on Sonic Advance. I think it was Sonic Advance. When I when I had it on my Game Boy Advance. It had something called the Tiny Chow Garden when you could raise one of your Chow there. And I raised my Chow so much in that one. And that one's an enhanceable spirit, too, so I think it turns into uh, one of the either Hero or Dark Chow. Because that's what they can evolve into in the game. I really. There's a lot of games I need to play, but I need to play more Sonic games because I've only ever played the original and Sonic Generations. Oh, okay. You'd like Adventure because I. The, the, 
You'd spend a lot of time with Chow Garden, I know you. <laughs> it's like, but there's levels to be beaten. But Chow's! But Chow's! We're fighting Tiki. I love Tiki. Tiki is the original Dragon Dragon Manakee character from Fire Emblem. And she's... <laughs> I, like, I like her because she's silly. Uh, and, you know, you can tell she's a child, but she's like a thousand years old. <laughs> so she's a lot older than everybody else. But... <laughs> One thing in particular, I played Fire Emblem Warriors, and when you get unlocked Tiki, uh, she gave her a British accent. And, I mean, they carried it over in Fire Emblem Heroes, too. Um, Fire Emblem Heroes, they have the same voice actors do Tiki from Heroes. And it's funny just to hear Tiki have a British voice accent. <laughs> you, you don't think of yeah, it, huh? I didn't think of it, but it's so cute, though, because um, there's... Uh, there's two versions of Tiki. There's the young version that's in Marth's game. Uh, Tiki was in um, the Arkham Age. Um, that's why they put Marth there, right? Yeah, that's why they put Marth there. Um, Tiki was in the... And plus, not only that, uh, Tiki, Tiki and Marth, Marth are really close. She calls him Marmar. Oh, that's where that came yeah, from. Yeah, that's okay. where it came from. Um, that makes sense yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> Tiki calls uh, Marth Marmar. And Tiki also appeared in Awakening. Uh, Awakening takes place, I think, like, thousand some odd years after the Arcanea games. So, Tiki is, like, a really older, older, dra wiser dragon character. And she's called, the uh, I think, Naga's voice in that game, if I remember correctly. Naga is the, uh, the divine dragon god of the, of the Fire Emblem world. Oh, okay. She's also, Tiki's also the daughter of Naga. Oh. Yeah. And we're gonna fight Mallow. Mallow is the other Mario Super Mario RPG character. It's a marshmallow! <laughs> yeah, Mallow is a cloud character. I haven't played Super Mario RPG. That's one game that's on my bucket list to play, because I know everybody everybody loves that game. That's why everybody wants Geno in Smash. It's on Switch, ain't it? No, it's not on Switch just yet. I thought it was. It's on the Wii U, though. Oh, okay. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think you can play it on the Wii U, though. So, uh, Mallow is kind of weird, because Mallow has uh, got stretchy arms, and he's also a mage, if I remember correctly in that game. A marshmallow mage? Yeah, that's why he got, uh, <laughs> got Mars here. That cast him lightning, because I think his element's lightning, if I remember correctly. And, of course, the magic can't stage, because it's clouds. So. Wait, you said Mars. Isn't that Robin? Um, did I say Marth? I meant Robin. Yeah. Robin. I was like, when did Mar when did Robin become Marth? <laughs> Tell the Smash community that they all think the Fire Emblem characters are the same. You got Blue Marth, Red <laughs> Marth, Girl Marth, and then there's there's a Psyche, <laughs> Buff Marth. <laughs> Magic Marth, that's Dragon why Marth. That's why they don't want any more sword characters, right? <laughs> yeah. Because they'll just be on another Marth. I hate it. I hate, I, I, as a Fire Emblem fan, that kind of bothers me <laughs> when I do that. I'm like, they're all not the same character. I know? just loved how you called Robin Marth. I'm like, wait I a minute. I didn't mean to say Marth. We were just talking about Marth. And I, I still have Marth in my mind. <laughs> Marth is one of my favorite characters in Fire Emblem, if you couldn't tell. So, <laughs> I have Marth in my mind half the time. Um, yeah, like... Yeah, the Smash community just kind of just blends all the Mar the Fire Emblem characters together. There's Marth. You got Blue Marth. You got Red Marth. You got Buff Mark, Marth. You got Girl Marth. You got Magic Marth. You got Dragon Marth. You got Teacher Marth. <laughs> Marth, man, you really get around. <laughs> stupid to think that way. I'm sorry, it really is stupid. I know it's a joke, but it's like, come on, guys, really? They're not that generic. Now we're fighting a character from Yoshi's Island? I think yeah. it's a boss? It said something like Spirit who loves to play jokes or something like that. I think this is a boss. I haven't played Yoshi's Island all the way through. I played like halfway through the game, but I can't... I've never be, encountered this character. Only... I, I love Yoshi. Oh, Spirit who loves surprises. That's what it was. Okay. I, I love Yoshi games. They're some of my favorites. I mean, I grew up, one of my first games I ever played was Yoshi's Story on the N64. I need so, to play uh, 
Wooly World at some point myself. You like Wooly World? I love Wooly World so much. I'm so behind on like the Wii U era of I'm games. Not, I'm not a big fan. Of, I, I'm still kind of salty about Crafted World though. I liked Crafted World when I first played it, but when I tried to 100% it, and that was the wrong idea to do because it made me hate the game. Aww. It really did make me hate the game when I tried to 100% Crafted World. Because the problem with Crafted World was, oh, it required you to play through every level at least five times. Every level five freaking times, man. I'm just like, come on, guys. You couldn't do that somewhere else or just have all the unlockables, you know, right at the beginning and I could just do one sweep thing of each level. And <laughs> I like how you said one sweep, but at the exact same time Mario swept Yoshi off the cliff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't mean to... I, don't, I know a lot of people probably like Crafted World, and I love that Crafted World's aesthetic. I didn't like the music either in that game. That me, The music in that game made me... Made mm -hmm. my ears hurt because it was just uh, a huge draw. That's from Kid Icarus. I think that's a boss. I was going to say. I know everybody's got that one game that they just, you know, they, you know, franchise they love. They love to death. And there's that one game that's just the glaring, like, problem child. Crafter World's that the, for me. The spot, the blemish on the clean spot, so mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. I know Yoshi's had a really bad track record with some games, like... I know a lot of people say, Oh, new Yoshi's New Island was a horrible game. Yeah, it was. I, I, I can agree with you on that one. Yoshi's New Island wasn't that great of a game. It was, you know... It had really crappy art style. With, I know it was supposed to be a crayon aesthetic, and... It was cute, but it was also just like a... Uh, Yoshi looked weird in that game. Yoshi threw eggs weird. And not only that, the music was just so... Ugh. I don't know why they choose the the music that they do for Yoshi anymore. Like, Woolly Worlds was great. It sounded... The soundtrack was really good in Woolly World. Just do that! From now on, use those instruments. Just don't go with the xylophone stuff anymore. Anyways, we're going in the dungeon, and enough uh, ranting about Yoshi games. Um, <laughs> I was wondering how long you were going to go on that. <laughs> this is Gourmet Race. The object of this is you have to grab as much food as you can on the pathways that you can go in order to get some spirits as you go here. I did. I think we did a really crappy job the first try. I think that was me, because I never played, you know, Kirby games like this that has this in it, so... I didn't know what to do. It's all right. We unlocked a spirit, uh, a spirit to unlock. So we're gonna go ahead. And, uh, don't go back. Don't go back. Don't go back. Don't go back. Ah, oh, you went back. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that I did that. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. The, the object of the thing is you're supposed to get as many, as much food as you well, can. Well, I think we were going back on purpose because we're like, let's try that again, see if there's something else we can get. Yeah, I think we might have done that. But we just kept going back and forth, back and forth with food and all this other junk to see how much we can get. Your object to get the best prize, I do believe you have to get 11 food items in order to get the best spirit or fight here. Yeah, here's our uh, first spirit. We're going to go ahead and fight it, I think. Swaddle D. Waddle do. <laughs> well, no, it's not Waddle Do. Waddle Do's another guy. <laughs> but Waddle Do. Waddle D is the uh, is the common enemy, common mook. He's the Goomba of the Kirby series. Yeah. But, they're, but they're so me. cute. I love Waddle D so much, and I'm so glad that in the recent Kirby games they made one a main character. His name is Bandana D. Mm -hmm. And it's so cute. I love him. I love Waddle D so much. And I feel so bad to kill him too, because. Look at that! How can you hate them? But they're just like we keep coming back. We keep coming back. We're the we're uh, King DDD's minions, and that's why we had to play as Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> had to play as Kirby to fight the Kirby's. Was well, there a Waddle D or even a Waddle Do in the Kirby show? Uh, yes. There's there was a bunch of King DDD had an army of Waddle D's, and the commanding officer of that that army was a Waddle Do. Oh, okay. Waddle Do is uh. We need to go finish. Uh, Kirby right back at you. Yeah. Um, 
Waddle Doos are uh, the creatures. They're kind of like Waddle Dees, but they have the giant eyeball. And okay. they use the beam. They're that's pretty good. I like Waddle Doos, yeah. I played Kirby games so much growing up. Uh, my first Kirby game was kind of an unorthodox one. My first Kirby- <laughs> you already know my experience with my first Kirby game. <laughs> it was yeah. a train wreck. <laughs> my first Kirby game was a uh, Kirby Tilt and Tumble on the Game Boy Color. I love I, that game. I that was the first one I actually played too, but I never actually like played it. Played it. Yeah. The first one I actually played was um, Super or was it Superstar? Is that the name of it? Yeah. You want a Super Nintendo? Yeah. Yeah. And I was recording with our friend Sonic Ghost, and that's why it was a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got eight pieces of food on that last one. We got Chef Kawasaki. Oh, the chefy. Yeah. A little Chef Kawasaki in the anime. Oh my god. You made me want to go back and rewatch it. <laughs> you want to go back and watch it? We never finished it. We gotta go back and finish it. <laughs> but Meta Knight is voiced by Antonio Dan Why? Bandera, so like... <laughs> Why? <laughs> Kirby is a star of Mario. Meta Knight is my favorite, but why? <laughs> That's a Pac-Man in this one. Chef Kawasaki is represented by a Pac-Man. I guess it makes sense because Pac-Man eats food, so. I mean, they could just use the Yao Kirby, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and plus, uh, his fight is just, you know, he summons Chef Kawasaki assist trophies. That's all it is. But yeah, Chef Kawasaki in the anime was so funny because he, 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 he wasn't a very good cook if I remember correctly. <laughs> he he worked for King DDD, but but he he wasn't a very good cook, even though he was a chef, and he had such a goofy persona. I actually no, he didn't work for King. Well, he did in some episodes. No, he just was in Nappy Town. Yeah. But he was just a. He was just enjoying Nappy what he did, man. Yeah, he, I'm sorry. There were some episodes where he did work for. I still remember that one episode of Kirby right back at you where <laughs> Kirby gets Chef Kirby for the first time. He, he makes a giant frying pan, grabs the monster with the giant frying <laughs> pan, sends it to space, makes it orbit space to cook the monster, and it comes back to back to uh, Dreamland. <laughs> and I'm like, how the heck did you do that? It's Kirby. <laughs> That's physically impossible. All right, so we got the Chef Kawasaki spirit. Now, I this one, this one you have to do a lot. Yeah, I think you have to do it a certain path in order to get all of them. You have to get 11, 11 pieces sure of food. Them? Yeah, you have to get eleven pieces of food on this path, and it's kind of like I said, you have to, it's you have to go a certain path. I don't think we did it right here. <laughs> we might not have done it right if I remember correctly, but there was some that you had to just. I was like, oh my gosh, how am we gonna, how are we gonna get this? Yeah, we got eleven. Okay. Yeah, so I cut, I cut to the good one. Okay. I thought, I thought I did in this recording. If I could so remember. who's the star of the race here? I mean, I'll give you three. Three chances. D D D D D D D D D. Yep. <laughs> three double D. Uh, three D's. Triple. A, a triple D. We're gonna do the triple D here to fight the D D D D. I like D D D. I think it's funny. I like D D D too. And I, I love the. Clobber that there, Kirby. I've got a clobber that there, Kirby. <laughs> I really want to go out and watch the show now. Do you really want to? <laughs> yeah. We never finished it. We yeah. gotta finish it. I love that show so much growing up. I've watched it every Saturday morning, along with Sonic X. I'm just so glad they made a Kirby uh, anime in a way. And did you know that Sakurai actually helped with the production of that anime? That's why it's so good. Yeah, Sakurai actually had some sort of input in that anime, which made me happy because I was like, okay, well that's why the anime was pretty good. <laughs> It's a, such an underrated video game anime. A lot of people don't know. It. Well, it's kind of like the, how the Donkey Kong Country show. I never was. knew there was. You didn't one. know there was a Donkey no. Kong Country show. And I love Donkey Kong. It, it it's really odd. The animation's really weird, but it's strangely funny, and I love it. I love the Donkey Kong show, and as much as I do the other ones, like it was during that time. It was during that time when. 
when the Super Mario Super Show is going on. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. We got King DVD. Hey, Nintendo, there's an idea for you. Bring back some old shows. Yeah, just... Just, uh... Make us a make a, la a service with all the shows that you can, you can do. Wasn't they working on a new Mario movie or something like that? Yeah, um, they're making a new Mario movie with uh, Illumination Studios, the ones that made the uh, Minions movies. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Miyamoto is actually helping out with that movie. Ooh. Yeah, that's why we haven't seen Miyamoto very much. <laughs> there we go. We cleared out uh, Dreamland or the Gourmet Race Dungeon. We got King DVD, and with that, we've unlocked pretty much everything on this World of Light map. Everything is done, I think. It has taken us a while. It's taken us a little <laughs> bit, but we've cleared out everything. I think the only thing left to do is we have to just go fight Gleam at this point. And fight his, you know, Master Hand minions. He's like, I've been waiting for you, Kirby. <laughs> I have been waiting for you, Kirby. <laughs> you want to save your friends? Well, you're going to have Too to bad. go for me. <laughs> yeah, we cleared out everything in the World of Light map. Oh my gosh, it took a long time, but we did it. So, <laughs> yeah, I was just double checking. This is checking. a big map. Yeah, I was just double checking to see if we did, did everything. and I think we did. So, yeah, the next time on Let's Play Super Smash Bros. Ultimate... <laughs> you make it sound like a TV outro. Yeah. Next time on Let's Play. <laughs> Next time on Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. We're going to fight Gleam. We're going to fight Master Hand. We're going to fight Gleam. Putting into this crap. So, that. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.